Hey guys, it's Dubmaster Khan here uh, with a tutorial video. This one's going to be pretty in depth, kind of uh, from start to finish, how you would make a reggae song in Logic Pro 10. Uh, I'm going to use all Logic software instruments, um, the plugins that come with Logic. I'm going to mix using Logic and do a sort of very, very simplistic mastering chain. Um, in logic. I mean, I'm not a master mastering engineer by any stretch of a word, but I'll, you know, do a poor man's master and you can kind of uh, check it out. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. All right, I'm just going to come up here, software instrument, create a new software instrument. Okay, it's going to start on this percussive organ for whatever reason. Go to piano and we'll go Steinway. It's a pretty good piano. All right, so the first thing I do usually is start with the rhythm. So we're going to do a piano. I'll set the tempo here to a little bit faster. Um, I like around 130. I will go 132. All right, here we go. And I'm just gonna do a minor the G major and that's it all right now I'll go here check it out it all looks pretty good um, if you want you can either quantize it here all the way or leave it how it is I mean, I can see right here that it's kind of off, so maybe I'll go to this one and bring it just a little bit closer. Not not 100% quantized, but, you know, around there. I, I kind of like it a little bit before the beat. That's kind of how I played, and it seems pretty good. Okay, now that we have the piano completed, uh, we're going to do the bubble organ, so let's click new instrument, new software instrument, and then we'll click vintage B3 organ and we'll start with this tone wheel organ, okay? It's kind of cool, but I don't really like the, the tone of it that much, so we're gonna go in and change, just drop these draw bars. This is the, the money shot draw bar. And we're gonna get rid of some of that click and some of that distortion. Maybe add a bit of, uh, um, what am I looking for? Yeah, a bit of lows. There you go. That's a much better bubble sound. Just take my word for it. Okay, now we're gonna record this. And we're gonna try and do like a shuffle, like a a uh, chain, a uh, a uh, chain, uh, not a uh, chit, a uh, a uh, chit, a. Uh. You'll see what I'm saying. As opposed to. See, this here, this here, the starting note, it's on beat pretty much, right? On beat, on beat. It's lagging a little bit in the end, which is fine. But as opposed to this one, which has more of a swing, see how it's later? It's not quite on beat. This is the on beat. It's off beat, off beat, off beat. But this one is on beat. So that gives a bit of a shuffle. So we're going to, we're, let's listen to the difference here. compared to I don't know if you can tell the difference it's subtle but it definitely gives a whole different feel okay now that we have the bubble organ 
we are going to delete this one, which is the less swing one. Okay. And we're going to add some drums. So we're going to click new software instrument. And then over here in the library, we're going to click drum kit, uh, Brooklyn. Doesn't really matter which one, whichever one you like m more, you know, you can, you can do. Now here we have to click on drum kit and click multi output, right? Then that adds this plus and minus so that you can separate these tracks, kick, snare, toms, hi-hat, right? See how they're all on their own separate track? I'm going to get rid of this um, processing that it comes with naturally. Um, so, you know, right? We're just going to record something just for this little four bar loop that we're making for the sake of the video here. And uh, we'll do just like a, a half drop. Okay, I'm going to go in here and uh, fix my terrible timing. So, especially on this hi-hat. I'm just going to make it about 78%. Um, I'll make the kick 100 and the snare perfectly on time, right? And I accidentally hit that. I did want that kick there. Um, also, another thing you can do is see how the kicks are kind of at different volumes. Well, I'm going to show you something here. If you click that, it highlights all the kicks. And then if you go to functions, excuse me, oh, where are we here? Um, yeah, MIDI transform. And you do either fixed velocity is a good one, right? Well, I'll want them at, let's say 100. And then select and operate. It just Oops. Operate only because I've already got selected what I want. So now, if you see, all of these are at 100 velocity, right? They're all the same. We'll do the same for the for the snare. I should have left it open. Um, fix velocity. We'll do that at 100 too. Now the hi hat. I kind of like what it's doing, right? It's yeah, the volume is higher, lower, All right? And you can you can go in. Let's change the tool here to uh, velocity tool, All right? And then if you command click, now it's velocity. You can lower this and lower this. And on the skank note, you can raise the volume here. Anyways, let's listen to what that sounds like. Okay, pretty good so far. All right, now that we have a rough sketch of our drums, we will move on to bass. And normally I use real bass guitar, um, but just for the sake of the video um, and so that you guys can do it on your own, um, we're gonna do a software bass. So let's click new software instrument. Then we'll go over here back to the library. Bass. Liverpool bass. Kind of like this one. Um, so I've already gone ahead and sort of pulled up some presets that I like. So I'm just going to go here. Reggae bass. And all I did was change it from this direct box direction. I turned on the amp and I moved it all the way to the amp. And then you can see my settings here. If you pause it and you want to try these settings, you can. And then uh, I'm going to change this. I saved the software reggae bass on the compressor here. Uh, you can check out these settings here. Uh, it's still the vintage VCA, which is kind of like 
excuse me, a Logic um, SSL uh, type compressor, which is pretty good for bass. So anyways, uh, try these settings out or experiment with your own. And I'm just going to record the bass now. Since I recorded the bass an extra four bars, we're just going to loop this by pressing, selecting and pressing L, and we'll go to there. Now it's like an eight bar beat or whatever. So let's listen to that. Okay, I noticed some some things here. Um, the timing of the organ here isn't very good, so I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. I think in here especially, get these a little bit closer. Okay, just like I did before on the the kick and snare and stuff, I'm gonna listen to this here, or I'm gonna select all these notes and I'm going to make them all the same velocity. Okay. And I'm actually going to raise this to more a little higher. Okay. So now it, the bass sound should be pretty consistent. It's we got a compressor on it. Um you know, we might go in later and EQ it. Um but anyways, let's add the little pluck guitar give the bass a little bit more texture. There we go. Let's go to guitar. Um, I'm not really sure. This one maybe? Yeah, that one's, that's pretty good. And an easy way to do this is to just copy the track over and then Okay, so what I'm seeing is this note sounds like crap because it's so long, right? But this note sounds pretty good. So we're going to use another MIDI transform here, and we will do maximum note length. And we will lower this to, let's try that. Okay, that's too long still. So let's try this. Still too long, so let's go one, which I think is a 16th note, something like that. So let's listen to that. It's a little better. I, I still think it could be even shorter. So we'll lower this and then we'll There we go. No, I would even say we should quantize it a bit. I mean, it's pretty good. We'll just get it a little bit. That's what it was. We'll just get it a little bit closer. There, let's listen to that. I see here that my uh, my drums are panned and I don't know why. So we're gonna go into the mixer, and we're gonna make sure that oh that's okay. All this stuff I don't really want this panned. I mean we can pan the pluck. I'm gonna rename this to pluck. I'm gonna rename this to bass. Piano. Bubble. Um, this is actually the symbols kick snare okay and then all these are just reverbs and they every time you add an instrument 
for whatever reason, it's going to want to add its own reverb, which I hate. But so we got rid of the reverbs and we kind of cleaned up the track. Now we can see what everything is. Okay. Now we're going to add some percussion. So let's add another software instrument. Go to world, percussion, African kit. It's pretty good. And I'm going to use this sound. pretty straightforward and we'll just duplicate the track here pan it kind of adversely and we'll just add another little shaker sound here Now I'm thinking since we're adding percussion and stuff, we should add a nice little percussive organ. Vintage B3 organ, and this bebop organ is pretty good. I'm just gonna this ready. Maybe get rid of some of that click. A little bit of it's okay since it is percussive and all. Okay. Okay, one more element that I would like to add, and normally I do this with real guitar, but for the sake of the video, let's do a fake guitar. I haven't done this in a while, so let's see what we can come up with. Let's start with this classic clean. Not terrible. <laughs> Not very real, but uh, let's go into the amp here. If you can get a real guitar, it's the best, but let's see if this is going to sound halfway decent. I mean, as just like a texture or whatever, it's fine, and I'll probably just uh, I'll probably just EQ it out a lot of it. Just use that higher kind of crunch. Maybe I'll even no, maybe I'll even just give it a little more trouble, and a little more gain. Another cool trick you can do is put on a um, a delay, just like a simple echo, kind of create that cheka sound.
there. I mean, kind of simulates the real thing. It's not perfect, but um, it's better than not having any guitar sound at all. Okay, now that I have all the elements that I want on this rhythm, um, for the most part, I'm going to add a drum roll in the beginning. Pretty good. You can see this needs to move over. This needs to move over. I was a little late. Let's listen to that. Okay, I need to have one more snare in here to give it a full roll sound. That sounds pretty good. Okay, I know now that I like all my sounds. I got a nice drum roll. I want to bounce all these tracks down to audio files because I'm done recording basically, except for the drums, I'll leave MIDI um, just to free up some CPU space. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to right click and say bounce in place. Okay. Bouncing in place. I'm going to do this to all the tracks and then when we come back they're all going to be done. Okay, so there is the new, it's creating it right now. Okay, here's the new piano file and now it's just an audio file. So I'm going to delete the MIDI file because we're done with it. And I'm going to do that to all these tracks and we'll come back. Alright, now I would like to work on the drum sounds, the EQ, the compression, because they sound good, they're good drums, they're sampled from a real drum kit, but they just don't have that oomph that you need. Because right now, I mean, let's listen to them. I got the drums soloed here, the kick, snare, toms, all that, and let's just listen to them. I mean, they sound good, but they just don't sound how they should. So I'm going to one by one kind of, I've already done some work here on a compressor and an EQ. Um, and let's just listen to the difference when we engage them. So I'll turn on the, uh, the compressor first. And right away, There's without it, there's with it, without it. Sounds more dead. It's pretty much the same volume too. See, 5.1, with it on, with it off. It's a little bit quieter. No, see, and that's what you want to do. When you're using an EQ or a compressor, you want to stage the gain so that when it's on, it's the same volume. That way, you know that it's doing something and it sounds better. Here's, it's on. It's got more thump without it. With it. Okay, let's try the EQ. Got rid of some of the muddiness in here. Added a little bit of bottom, a little bit of the smack. See here. And a little bit of the tap. A little bit of brightness. And like I said, it's the same volume. So let's move on to the snare. Try with this uh, the EQ. The EQ I got on the chain first. So I don't know why. You'll notice a drastic difference with and without. I guess this is quite a bit louder. 
So let's just turn it down. So it gives it more bottom, more oomph, right? And then turn on the compressor here. And then, I mean, you can see without, with. It's kind of heavily compressed. I could turn the mixture down. It's a little better. Now, here's that gate. It's barely letting anything go. And it might sound drastic right here, but with the on the whole mix, See how much better that sounds? Okay, let's listen to the hi-hat. You hear that? I don't know if you can tell on the speakers, but... It's just like a muddiness. So let's add some top. Let's roll away what we don't need. Maybe somewhere right in there. And then. That sounds good right there to me. We'll add a little. I like kind of what that sounds like right there. So before. It's just, there's a lot of thud going on. And that just cleans it up. So now, if we listen to the drums. Let's listen. Way better. I did turn the snare up quite a bit. But if we turn off all the processing. See how much better that sounds with it on? Sounds way better. And then to make it even better, what we can do is send all this, <clears throat> excuse me, to its own bus track. Now what that's doing is that's taking all of these tracks and putting them into this bus, which we'll call the drum bus, okay? And we'll listen to it again. So now that's all routing to here. And then I've, all, I've done a little bit of compression here. And EQ. So without the EQ, I really helped getting rid of that mud right here. The kick just sounds so much more clear. Now let's listen in context of the whole song. Close these out. Sounding a lot better to me, anyways. Okay, now we're gonna work on the EQ of the rhythm section here. 
So I've got these four tracks bust to this rhythm bus track, um, but right now the nothing's engaged, and we'll add some EQ and compression later. We're just gonna basically add EQ to these four instruments. Uh, we'll start with the piano. This is without any EQ. It's got a lot of bottom end, so we're gonna get rid of that and accentuate more the top end. Same with this. Had a resonant frequency probably somewhere in right here that I got rid of. And the bubble. I'm using this directional mixer thing because it was a stereo track. You probably can't tell because I'm using one microphone, but uh, this brought it down to more mono, which is what I think it should be. Um, now this percuss percussive organ, it's gonna brighten up the top. Okay, and now, we're just going to throw some compression and some EQ on the bus track, which is all the instruments. So we'll solo that. And we'll add some compression and some EQ. Just kind of glues things together, right? Alright, now let's listen to that in the context of the whole song. Okay, and then let's add a little bit of more, some more bottom end and scoop out a little more mids on the bass. Let's do a, a comparison here. It's subtle, but all right, so that sounds pretty good. Now let's talk about the mix bus. That's the output track here. Um, usually I'll add a little bit of just corrective EQ and just that sort of sweet bus compression. Let's listen. got rid of some of the resonant frequencies. Now let's try the compressor here. Just kind of glues everything together without. on there really brings it up to the right volume You get the idea. Now that our track is sounding pretty good, 
you know, we got all the EQ sounding right, all the compression, the dynamic range is all pretty good. It's still very raw. We need to add some reverb to sweeten it up, to give those old school spring reverb vibes and just to make it sound a little bit better. Um, I'll start here with the drum bus. I've added this reverb here called drum chamber full and that's in small spaces, rooms, drum chamber full. Um, we'll just start by listening to it on a kind of an extreme setting, which is what it's at right now. Let's listen. So that's kind of a lot. So I'll just turn it down. Now that sounds pretty good. Here's without. Maybe a little more. Yeah. Without. With. Yeah, I see it kind of emulates um, being in a, you know, the drums being recorded in like a drum chamber. Let's check out the, uh, this reverb I got on the Rhythm Bus track. It's uh, the Recording Room Plus. So let's listen to it without it. With it on an extreme setting. Sounds like it, it puts it in a room, you know? So we'll back it back down. That sounds pretty good right there. Okay, so we'll leave that on. Um, and then here's our send reverb. Here is the reverb I use on almost all my tracks. It's called the Rack Mount Bright under medium spaces, spring reverbs, Rack Mount Bright. Okay? And this one you'll see I have, since it's on an auxiliary track, bus three, and all these sends will send the signal, like a copy of, the, of that track, to this send. It's going to come in here. But it's not going to have any of the dry signal, only the wet signal. So that's how sends work, right? Um, I'll, I'll go here. I'm going to send this. And then this is really what this is doing. It's just that washed out reverb sound. Right? But if you... With it in context, it sounds really nice right gives it those old vibes so what now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of that spring reverb to each and one every one of these tracks maybe not everyone but most of them start with the percussion Sounds pretty good. Now let's talk about delay. So I have all, all these set to bus four now onto this delay track, which is um, Logic's tape delay, which is pretty cool. So let's check it out on the rhythm bus. Just raise the feedback. Right? It's pretty sweet. And then you can also add a little bit of reverb, which is bus three, onto your tape delay. Wash it out. Right? Pretty sweet. Love that. Super old school vibes. Um, now I'm just gonna kind of as at the end here. We're just gonna do a little dub, play around, add some reverbs, some delays, just kind of mix it in, mix it out. 
just have some fun with it. Here we go. get the idea. <laughs> well, that concludes this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube page. Please comment if, if this has been helpful to you, if you've enjoyed it. Um, I've had a lot of fun making this. Um, so yeah, until next time, big up all the reggae massive out there. Peace.